All right, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. All right, today's a big day. Video number 500 for me on the channel. 500 videos uh, in the last 10 years, so pretty exciting day for me. I'm going to do it on the best passing concept. I want to know what your opinion is of your best passing concept, the one that you love teaching, why you love teaching it, all right? And I don't need to know about coverages. I don't need to know about what you think it might be. Just tell me what yours is, why you love teaching it, all right? So, uh, video number 500, big day for us. Got uh, the virtual clinic series going on, just locked in uh, a pretty big speaker that I'm extremely uh, excited to hear from on April 13th. Next one we're doing is a week from Thursday, March 30th. Um, Sean McIntyre, head football coach, Creekside High School in Jacksonville, Florida, making game drills or making drills game specific. So I'm excited about that one. So we got the Play Fast virtual clinic series going on. Uh, again, just locked in a pretty big name speaker that I'm excited about. Video number 500. Let's get it started with some of our partners. GameStrat Sideline Replay Company we use all right, with uh, Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them the last five or six years. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out GameStrat Dome Hats. Headwear company we use. I use them at Bishop Kenny High School. I use them at with my Play Fast stuff. I've used them for the last 10 years. If you're looking for, <coughs> excuse me, completely customizable, all right, hats where you get online, you build your own hat, change the style, change the panel color, change the logos, put your logo on there, put stitching or embroidery on there, all right? You can change it from snapback, fitted, Velcro enclosures on the back, completely customizable. Every hat has a story. Check out Dome Baker Sporting Goods. All right, it's a company we use at Bishop Kenny High School. They provide our coaching gear for practice, our sideline gear on Friday nights, our player spirit packs. Now, our uniforms are distributed from them. All right, they've got a ton of things other than just cloth. Make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play, the playbook software that we use. We use it for our installs. We use it for our team meetings. I use it for my Patreon site. It's the best play drawing tool on the market, and it's a unique teaching tool. Allows you to use video and diagrams to quiz your players on game plans. All right, and uh, playbook. So check out Just Play Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Thousands of reps. Don't need a partner. Don't have to teach anybody how to hold a bag, how to hold a hand shield. It's just the player going and the Difference USA machine hooks up to any rack that you have, any squat rack that you have in your weight room. All right, so it's perfect for in-season, off-season skill development. Check out Difference USA. And then X and O Notebook, custom notebooks for players and coaches. If you want to take your meetings to the next level and enhance your learning environment, we all use all of our digital tools now. We all have our playbooks that are online or through apps or whatever it is, but we still need a way for our players to retain that information. Our coaches and game plans retain that information. What better way to do that than with a completely customizable notebook that has templates already drawn in it, a page for your notes. You can completely customize the templates, custom logo on the front. Players can write it down. They can have one for your playbook. Your coaches can have one for game plans. You can have one, or you can have a made for clinics that you go to. All right, so completely customizable notebooks. Check out xnonotebook.com. Okay, so I want to do this video today, and again, it's going to be a feedback video. I'm going to draw some things up that I like, but I want to know from you, what is the best passing concept? What is the one that you absolutely love? Why do you love it? Okay, completely opinion-based. Every answer is correct. Uh, I'm not going to argue with any of your answers. This is just my opinion. What am I going to draw up? I'm going to draw up snag concept, all right? So if I had front side snag concept, all right, and base in the three-man world, if I had snag corner flat, and again, I'll just draw up two-man snag on the back side, and what I'll do is I'll draw it up with two-man snag here, and since we're in two-by-two, two, I'll draw it up with a rail on the back side, right? You can put other things on the back side if you want to, but standard version of three-man snag, snag corner flat. All right, I think it's easy for the quarterback to read. I think it's easy for the quarterback to throw. If we're releasing the back and we're pushing the back, obviously we're in five-man protection, going to half slide it. Okay, some things, issues that you may have. All right, when you release the back front side, if you get front side blitzers, what are you going to do with the ball? Okay, if we keep the back in and we check them down, can we get them to the flat fast enough to stretch the leverage of the nickel? All right, so definitely every route concept is going to have issues. Every route concept is going to have things that take it away. But to me, all right, my favorite passing concept, I think the best passing concept out there is snag. Here's why. Once we start it as three-man snag, we teach it that way. We can run it as two-man snag to a single side. We can run it with the rail concept, all right, on, on the back side. If we get man-to-man, -man, we can build in a man-to-man -man beater. All right, coming off the initial snag, we can always go snag corner post, middle of the field open, 
We're working the snag concept. We're working the corner out. Now that we've got the safety used to the corner route, we can go back, all right, middle of the field. Here's a shot play for you, all right. If you're playing teams that are middle of the field open, you go right to the corner post off a of snag. Again, just a tag. Snag, tag the corner post. Now we've got a middle of the field open beater, okay. If you're playing against teams that are giving you your traditional two read answers, okay, and they're giving you two reads so when you run the snag, the corner sinks, all right, you're having a hard time throwing the corner out. Make this a traditional, more spacing concept. So run what I would call the spot route inside, snag route by number one. All right, so snag on the nickel, spot off the mic, push the back. Now they technically only have two underneath players if they want to. All right, push the mic to the front side. The mic gets eaten up by the spot. Put all the pressure on the nickel, and the nickel's got to handle the snag that's going to wrap on him and the back pushing to the flat. Now you've got that three on two underneath. Simple spacing concept. Put players in positions where the defense can't defend them. Make them change the coverage. Now, if they change the coverage, the original snag play, all right, might be a better option for us. If you want another shot play off of your traditional snag concept, right? So you've got your traditional snag concept. You want another, uh, you want another shot play. Middle of the field open, snag and go. All right, a lot of teams I've seen Lincoln Riley run this as hitch and run. All right, theories where this is now snag by number one, settle your feet, bang it right down the middle of the field. So corner by two, push flat by the back, snag and go. We used to call it wiggle in our terminology. You can call it whatever you want, but here's the deal. They have to match if they're pushing to match and the Sam or the nickel, if the Sam or the nickel widens there, and the mic pushes. Now if it's middle of the field open, when the mic matches that snag, he's got to match the snag vertical because the middle of the field's open. The corner route occupies the free safety, takes him out there. Corner can sink under that. They've got the corner route kind of high load or almost doubled. Now you've got Mike matching the three. Okay, Mike matches the three and now you throw all right, the wiggle down the middle of the field. So another shot play. So corner post, Snag, wiggle, all shot plays that you can work against middle of the field, open. Okay, so middle of the field, open, you get all those concepts that you want. On the back side, if you want to tag, simple way, if you're a wide cross guy, you can tag wide cross to the back side, all right, of your snag concept, and now you can run the wide cross theory there, all right, and now, again, front side, three-man snag, simple concept, snag, corner, flat, and now you run the Y cross, and then you can do whatever you want. If you want to change it, if you're running Y cross, if you want it to run curl or possibly dig or something on the backside, whatever you want it to do, build it in however you want it. All right, it's still simple three man snag there, and now you've tagged it to the back. So now we're talking about simple tags. We just got to be able to identify whether you want to label the position however you want to do it within your tags. All right, you start off. We're three-man snag, and then we tag corner post, right? So we're three-man snag, we tag corner post. Then we tag the spot route to make it true spacing. Then we tag the wiggle route, which is the snag and go, and now we've got another middle of the field shot concept. Then we tag the backside, and we run the wide cross concept, okay? Another thing that was good for us Away from snag, working away from Mike pushes, we built in screens on the backside. So we would run, two would go out and block the corner, one would go fast hands and fast feet, run the tunnel coming back. All right, we would get guard, set, run the alley, center, set. All right, sorry, guard would go sideline. That would be your first kick player. My apologies. First man out would be the sideline kick player. Second man out would be the alley player. Third man out on the backside, if we could get him out, would be what you would call the rat kill, looking to play anything that chases or maybe the possible cutoff seal guy there. So it would be front side, and I know you're going to say, well, coach, how are you going to draw up a uh, snag concept front side and still run screens on the backside? We, re we run it off of Mike Push. All right, so if we get Mike Push, we know we're throwing the screen. Okay, so if we get pressure, we've got to be able to throw hot or do something against pressure. If we don't get pressure and we get Mike push, we know we're going back, back side. All right, so as soon as the Mike pushes, we know that we have numbers to the screen side. So the quarterback knows if he sees Mike push off that back foot, when that back foot hits the ground, however you treat this drop for your quarterbacks, back foot hits the ground, now we're going to start to 
All right, we're going to start to uh, work away from the line of scrimmage into our screen mechanics. So back foot hits the ground, Mike pushed, I know I'm not staying front side, now I'm going to start to evade back a little bit, work my screen mechanics, high release point, get that wrist up, get the ball back on the tunnel, away from the Mike push, right? So kind of a pass, pass, PPO option, right? So pass front side, screen back side. So we've got it built in, we've done it to the running back, we've done it to the tunnel screen, we've done it a bunch of ways back side, built off of the initial throw. If the mic doesn't push, quarterback knows, well, hey, if this is tagged as a PPO with the screen concept both sides, and the mic doesn't push, if I've got numbers, the ball's got to come out, either snag flat, or if I've got zero or some type of look, ball's got to come out, I can, when my back foot hits the ground, I can throw the corner up. I can't sit here and hold the ball. These guys are getting out on screens after the initial set. The initial set should be good enough for me to throw either hot, or if it's zero and I want to hold and throw all right, the corner route, if I'm getting pressure, but all right, the corner route is there in zero coverage. If I'm not getting pressure and Mike pushes, I've got the snag or the tailback to go out, right? If this, again, sorry, Mike push, I can go screen. If the Mike doesn't push, all right, no Mike push, now I know when my back foot hits, I should have snag, especially against too high, too read, all right, or, or palms coverage. I know I should have numbers over there. So to me, the uh, three-man snag concept, yeah, I think it's the best concept for me. And again, personally, any of these concepts, whatever you think are the best passing concepts. I know I'm going to get four verts as an answer. I know I'm going to get mesh as an answer. I don't think any of those things are wrong. Whatever you do, I think you need to do it well and you need to protect it and have your answers in to protect it. One of the reasons for me, the, the re I choose snag, is because I want multiple ways to tag a simple play. Now. The reads are going to change a little bit for the quarterback, right? It's not all saying, hey, look here, all these tags, perfect world. No, the reads are going to change a little bit. We might have Mike push. We might have to go off of a safety or a different read that we might be making. So nothing in the passing game, when you start wrinkling it up, nothing is ever that easy. It takes work. It takes time. You've got to have quarterbacks that are willing to understand what you're doing. You've got to have receivers that are willing to understand tags. Okay, but for me, rather than look at eight to nine or ten different concepts, I would rather work on one concept and build in some answers on how I can attack some defense. Is that the only concept we're going to carry? No. We're going to carry a few other concepts, but I am not a heavy concept guy. I don't like carrying six, seven, eight drop back concepts because for me, in my game plans, we drop back and threw the ball traditional five-step drop back passing probably 10 to 12 times a game. So if we threw the ball 25 times a game and only 10 of those are dropbacks, how many dropback concepts should I really carry if I'm only dropback passing 10 times a game? You drop back and throw the ball 25 times a game, you're going to need more concepts, right? You're going to need more answers. So for us, it was always limit the concepts, try and carry things that can attack different coverages, but let's be really careful with what we select conceptually to attack these coverages because we probably can't get to multiple concepts because we only drop back and throw the ball 10 times a game. So if that makes sense, when you're talking about planning, you're talking about efficiency. If I'm going to work my practice plan and I'm only going to have X amount of time to work on these drop back passes, how many can I actually work on in this short amount of time? So it's all a matter of what the coordinator wants to do, what the play caller wants to do. If you're going to live in a world with multiple concepts, all right, there's nothing wrong with that. You just better practice that and you better be willing to spend time practicing that. Okay, if you're going to live in a world with limited concepts, well then you better know that the other things, you know, whether it's quick game, RPOs, you know, whatever you're doing, your boots or your waggles, make sure that your, your game plan matches up so that if you throw the ball 22 to 25 times a game, make sure you know 10 of those are dropbacks, 3 or 4 of them are play action shots or something else, 3 or 4 might be boots or waggles, 4 or 5 quick games, 1 or 2 screens, whatever the... Whatever the percentages are, that's the way you need to practice. So you need to know who you are as an offensive coordinator. You need to know how you like to do things. For me, conceptually, I don't like to carry a ton of concepts. I like snag. I like it with all these different tags. Now I'm going to have to work on these tags. I like it to attack multiple coverages. And then I like maybe carrying one or two other things. Maybe we carry flood. All right, who knows what the deal is. Maybe we carry. I used to carry curl flat all the time because curl flat or curl spot flat has been around for 50 or 60 years. Uh, some people say with too high and all the quarters are too read you get, it's kind of a dead play, but you still see a bunch of one high and a bunch of three deep. So, 
you know, curl flat to me was always a good theory, so I would carry that. Um, but again, this is what you think is your best passing concept. There is no wrong answer. All right, so when I get all the comments or anything else, I'm not going to come back and say I disagree. It could be four verts, it could be mesh, it could be mills, it could be dagger, it could be dragon, it could be whatever all the other concepts are. All right, you name it, they're out there. There's a million of them out there. So whatever you think is the best passing concept, I want to hear from you. All right, and again, it's your idea. There is no wrong answer. This is video number 500, 500 videos on the YouTube channel, just me just the whiteboard, all football videos, so big day for us, excited to hear a lot of your answers. If you are not a subscriber, make sure you click that subscribe button, turn your notifications on, ring that bell so you know every time we do a video or we go on YouTube Live. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the, the content or you don't, or you like the way I present or you don't. Leave a, uh, leave a message, I will definitely respond to all the messages I see. I want to see a bunch of messages on this video because I want to know what do you think is the best passing concept out there? What is the best passing concept for you? What do you teach day one? What do you love to teach? Why do you love to teach it? Let me know. I'm interested to hear all of your answers, okay? So again, video 500. Thanks for being along for the ride. Virtual clinic series going on right now. Next speaker, March 30th, a week from this Thursday. Sean McIntyre, Creekside High School, all right, making drills game specific. All right, Thursday, March 30th, email me, sting8740, uh, to, so you can figure out what you need to do to register so I can get you registered. I'm also offering a clinic pass for the next nine speakers, so there'll be, all right, a way to register for all nine speakers. If you can't be there live, I record them, put them up privately on my YouTube channel, and then I send you the link. Everybody that came to the uh, Noma Zone clinic got the link sent to them afterwards and then even if they couldn't be there live if they registered they got the link so if you register if you want to register for the next nine you can do that if you want to register just for coach McIntyre you can do that all right play fast virtual clinic series 2024 the play fast live clinic will be up again a lot of great things going on appreciate everything you guys do for us happy video number 500 remember you won't play well until you play fast and I will see you guys at 501 next time